We must recreate the European family in a regional structure called, it may be, the United States of Europe. And the first practical step would be to form a Council of Europe. If at first all the states of Europe are not willing or able to join the Union, we must nevertheless proceed to assemble and combine those who will and those who can. We cannot aim at anything less than the Union of Europe as a whole. And we look forward with confidence to the day when that union will be achieved. So here we are with Churchill promoting the Union of Europe. It has to be conceded that at that time, in the late 40s and early 50s, he didn't actually envisage Britain taking part in the European Union, although he was promoting it. But that was to change. And it was to change because circumstances changed. As the 50s rolled into the early 60s, it was quite clear that our empire was finished, our commonwealth was diminished, and our relationship with America was changed. In 1961, Britain applied to join the European Economic Community, later to be called the European Union, and Churchill endorsed the application. Messieurs, nous allons procéder à la signature des actes. Well, what was the result? The result was a resounding yes. I believe that this Thursday can be our country's Independence Day. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our Independence Day. That means when you take away the rebate, the EU money is sent to the Treasury and the private sector funding, £161 million a week is going to the EU. So, how does that stack up? Well, every week the UK spends £821 million on defence. It spends £1.4 billion on education. On the NHS, £2.6 billion. And on top of that, it spends £3.6 billion on pensions. So, the price of EU membership, £161 million a week. Is it worth it? Well, the voters will decide. Take back control of huge sums of money, £350 million a week, and spend it on our priorities, such as the NHS. And I'm not even sure the pro-Brexit camp had planned on winning, because the next day they started speaking a lot more carefully about the promises that had been made. You might remember that campaign bus which read, we send the EU £350 million a week, let's fund our National Health Service instead. Well, here's Nigel Farage the morning after the vote. The £350 million a week we send to the EU, which we will no longer send to the EU, can you guarantee that's going to go to the NHS? No, I can't. And I, and I would never have made that claim. That was one of the mistakes, I didn't think, that the Leave campaign made. Oh, now you're telling us! <laughs> but it does seem that Farage will not correct factual mistakes when they're on the side of buses. I, therefore, would encourage Britain to take out bus ads reading, Nigel Farage has spent hours trying to put his own penis in his arsehole. <laughs> I presume he'll be silent about it. However, when the Article 50 process is triggered in three months' time, the UK will be on a two-year path to the EU exit door. If Parliament judges that a second referendum is the best or only way to protect our place in Europe, it must have the option to hold one within that timescale. That means we must act now to protect that position. I can therefore confirm today that in order to protect that position, we will begin to prepare the legislation that would be required to enable a new independence referendum to take place if and when Parliament so decides. So any decision to take us out of Europe is a big deal. It's a big crisis and we have to face the reality that it is a crisis and that there needs to be a resolution of that. This is about the future and it is about a decision which uh, has effectively, in my view, 
under, undermined the, the good work that was done in the Good Friday Agreement. So, uh, as this Jerry has correctly said, uh, we, we looked to Dublin for support on this. If Gibraltar and the UK were to leave the European Union, it would place us, it would place the border, the fluidity of the border, indeed the very fact of whether the border is open or closed, it would place that at the mercy of Madrid. And that would be a very serious, have very serious economic consequences for us. The British Foreign Minister Boris Johnson says we could, in theory, stay inside the single market, um, but also stop the freedom of movement. So just stop this idea that any EU citizen can come, move, live and work in I, the UK. I could, in theory, win the 100 metres Olympic race. It's just not happening. No, I, I think all of us have been pretty clear in our approach that we want a fair deal for the UK, but that sort of fair deal cannot translate itself into a superior deal. I know that there is absolutely no bluffing from the European side, at least in the council meetings I have attended, in saying we will start in this, with this position, then we will soften up. No, this is really and truly our position, um, and I don't see it changing. Uh, singles life is great, Homer. I can do whatever I want. Today I drank a beer in the bathroom. You went down the hall. Yeah, and the other great thing is you get your country back. I have my own island. Do you? I belong to a continent with love. Oh, yeah. Sì, ma non è un fatto tecnico. Il fatto di aver lasciato l'Europa in mano ai tecnici, ai, tecnocra ai tecnocrati, ha distrutto tutto. L'Europa è il grande sogno di Altiero Spinelli. L'Europa è l'idea di Adenauer, di Schumann. L'Europa è Mitterrand e Kohl, che uno socialista, l'altro democristiano, uno francese e l'altro tedesco si prendono per mano e immaginano per il futuro dei figli che cosa? 70 anni di pace, un orizzonte di speranza. Da 20 anni a questa parte l'Europa l'abbiamo lasciata in mano ai burocrati di Bruxelles che ci raccontano tutto di come deve essere fatto il cioccolato, il prodotto tipico. Poi però quando arriva Lampedusa che fanno? Si girano dall'altra parte. Eh no, Lampedusa è un problema italiano. Cosa fanno di fronte al disastro educativo del nostro tempo che è la vera crisi che stiamo vivendo? Allora, il, se lei me la mette dal punto di vista tecnico, le dico che Francia e Germania nel primo decennio del 2000 hanno superato quel vincolo. L'Italia stessa, lo ricordava Gianni, appena rientrato da una procedura di infrazione su questo. E sicuramente dobbiamo rimettere in discussione il trattato di Maastricht perché in questa parte è basato su un modello in cui l'Europa correva. Oggi non corre più l'Europa. Oggi a livello economico corre il Far East, oggi corrono le tigri asiatiche, non corre più il vecchio continente. Però rovesciamo per una volta il ragionamento. La tecnica ha distrutto l'Europa, la politica può salvarla. Come? Se finalmente riusciamo a far capire che l'Europa non è un luogo di ragionieri o un mostro da combattere. È la casa per i nostri figli. Stati Uniti d'Europa, servizio civile europeo, grande investimento in cultura, immigrazione, associazionismo europeo.